Okay, so here we are and we're going to instruct on number sets, the sets of numbers that we now currently have to solve our problems. But before we begin that, uh, let's talk about what the Lord says about numbers and how they work with him. Moses chapter 1, verse 35 through 37. But only an account of this earth and the inhabitants thereof give I unto you. For behold, there are many worlds that have passed away by the word of my power. And there are many that now stand, and innumerable are they unto man. Look at that. All things are numbered unto him. For they are mine, and I know them. And it came to pass that Moses spake unto God, Be merciful unto thy servant, and tell me concerning this earth and the inhabitants thereof. And the Lord spake unto Moses, The heavens, they are many, and they cannot be numbered unto man. But they are numbered unto me. Think about the stars and the planets, and wow, they're all numbered unto him. And yet, here in Matthew 10, it tells us how concerned he is with us. Uh, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Not only the vast cosmos is numbered unto him, but the uh, individual personal things that are involved with us. So the story of our number sets begins with really the story of the problems that humans had to solve. And so each of these number sets came about in answer to uh, problems that we had to take care of. So when we first started using numbers, they were adjectives where we described things in nature, which gives us this uh, the natural numbers that describe things in nature. So if we think about natural numbers, start counting one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. This right here are all the natural numbers, and they are the adjectives that describe things at a very basic fundamental level. At some point, this was not sufficient to describe all the things that we needed to describe. And we had a need to use a number zero. Think about it. If we have something like uh, 2073, this is two thousands seven tens and three ones. But how do we know this is in the thousands place? It's because of that zero right there. So yeah, the whole numbers, which means we can now describe everything that's there, or we can describe what's not there. Oh, we have a zero and we add it in. That's the only distinction. So here we have all the numbers that we normally count with. And when we add zero to it, these are now called the whole numbers and can handle anything that is not there. Eventually, that was not sufficient, and we had to be able to describe things that happened in the other direction. Think about your checking account. Instead of just having $5 in your checking account, somebody overdraws, and now they have a negative $5 in their account. What does that mean? Negative $5. Can you go to a vault and say, hey, negative 1, 2, 3, 4? No, you can't do that. It means it goes the other direction, that you owe $5. So this sign was created to mean the other direction. And that's why when you subtract a negative, it counterbalances it and you end up being positive. The numbers that include all the negatives of the naturals are called the integers. And they have a symbol double lined Z for German word Zahlen, meaning numbers. So the integers, these are the nice ones as far as, well, forever down, you have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and then 0, and all of the natural ones, up forever. Yeah, those are the integers. Now, I want you to look for just a minute at, at how we've started building the numbers that you all know and love. Notice down here in the bottom is the number line that we all know and love. When we started out, we had just little marks on it. There had a number one, and a number two, and a number three, and we had all of them building on forever and ever up here. Just little dots, really, along this little place. Then we came along, and as soon as we hit the whole numbers, we're like, oh, look, there's zero. And yeah, good. Now we know where zero is, and one, two, three, four, and five. So the whole numbers, there's not a lot of difference between that and the natural numbers there. However, when we did negatives, we took all of these and made them go in the other direction as well. So negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Notice we still just have these little dots all the way up. So if you are ever given instructions that say integers, uh, that means you're not with fractions or decimals. But you'll notice we haven't covered the whole line. And really, the next level, the rational numbers, are all the fractions. Yeah, so this comes from the word ratio, a ratio of two of them. So if we took negative seven thirds or 
one half, we start to get all of these little, we start filling in all these little holes all the way along here. And that's pretty cool. We can fill in and we can describe almost everything in nature with this. So those are the rational numbers, which include all the positive and negative fractions of any integers. And that's pretty cool. When you start sticking these into calculators, you realize like 1 half, if you stick it in, you get 0.5. If you do negative 7 thirds, you get negative 2.33333 on forever. And so these kind of help us see that, yeah, when you turn them into decimals, you will either get, with rational numbers, a decimal that either stops, terminates, or repeats a pattern. And that is how you can identify rational numbers as they do this. Well, they found out that that isn't really everything that there are holes along here. I'm going to put this right here. There are holes that we missed that are all along here. One of them you're very familiar with, pi. The ratio of a circumference to a diameter of a circle is right in here somewhere. 3.14159. If any of you are aware of that, that keeps going. 3.14159, dot, 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 dot. There's no repeating of a pattern, and it doesn't stop. There are others, a um, very famous one, where you have a right triangle and you have 1 squared plus 1 squared. And how big is this guy? Well, 1 squared plus 1 squared with the Pythagorean theorem equals x squared. x equals, it turns out to be the square root of 2, which turns out to be about 1.41 something, something, something. So any square roots that uh, don't come out nice end up being irrational, not fractional. So there has to be a little guy in here. We'll do a symbol i, but really this guy right here is irrational, so not fractional, and it's everything that's not a fraction. But it's really, yeah, described by what it is not. So it's in other textbooks they'll say, oh, it's the real numbers, everything you know, this entire line, minus or take away the rationals. And so that's a possibility to write that, but we'll use an I just in our case here. So that's how it built up, because we needed negative numbers to be able to handle distance going down, below sea level, or uh, velocities going backwards, and fractions. Certainly we had to have all these fractions, and then we have problems like this one where we need the square root of 2 and we need pi, but they can't be represented as fractions, so now that's how we got all of our real numbers. Let's create a visual that will show us how we got this. If we take the natural numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we take and add to that the number 0, then together those make the whole numbers. If we take the whole numbers and add to that all of the uh, negative natural numbers, and put those two together, we get the integers, uh, these guys right here. And if we take all of those guys and add to those guys the fractions that don't come out nicely into an integer, and we put those two together, we now have the rationals. There we go. And if we take the rationals and we add to those uh, the irrationals, this is the pi's and the square root of twos and the all the other weird numbers there and we put those together we now have the whole real number system so later on in the course we're going to go bigger and have problems that we can't solve with just these numbers so we have to kind of create and make up more numbers to be able to solve all the problems that we have hey that should do number sets for you so now it's time to try a few on your own to the boards See if you can identify which number sets each of these numbers belongs to. Uh, work it out in your notebook, pause the video, and then come back when you're done and let's check them. Okay, I hope you had a chance to work through those. Let's see what we get. The number 2, you'll notice it's right up here in the natural numbers. 
which means it is also a whole number because the whole numbers include all the natural numbers. It is an integer because the integers include all the whole and natural numbers, which means it must be a rational number as well. Rationals include all of them. And so the number two is in all of them, which obviously is a real number. Certainly it's on the number line. It is a rational two over one, four over two, eight over four, any of those. Uh, it is an integer because it includes all of those from the natural numbers. Okay, th negative three eighths. This is this doesn't simplify down, so it's not a uh, so it doesn't have any fractional parts. So it is yes, it's a ratio of two integers, so it's definitely rational, and everything here is going to be a real number. So zero is not a natural number, but it is a whole number, which means it is also an integer, which means it's also rational and real. Yes, so it is a ratio of two integers, 0 to 5, 0 to 8, 0 to 10, stuff like that. 4 is a natural, so it's going to follow just like number 2. It is a natural, and all naturals are whole. All wholes are integers, um, and then all integers are rationals, and all rationals are real. Square root of 19. Square root of 19 does not come out nice and is not a fraction. This is one of those where it is not a fraction so it's got to be a really weird one so this is irrational we'll use an i for that right now and it is a real number all real numbers anywhere on the number line so if you can punch it into a calculator and it pops out nice to a basic calculator then indeed it is a real number 3.4545 which repeats on forever uh, fractions are repeating decimals so this repeats a pattern which means it will be rational You'll notice we are not natural, we're not whole, and we're not integers because this is a decimal fraction-ish. And so it is rational and real. And this one, 2.01001001. And if it keeps going in this way, it never repeats the pattern 01. Well, it has it show up, but it doesn't repeat exactly this pattern. So this one is actually an irrational number. And of course, it's real. All of these numbers are real. Um, the ones that do not repeat a pattern or are square roots or pi will have irrational. Good. Good luck on the assignment.